Hi students, my name is Ms. Para and I'm a counselor at the Harbor College Transfer Center. Today I'm going to be going over how to apply to Cal State for fall 2023, 2024 excuse me, transfer admission. So the dates to apply to Cal State for fall 2024 admission is October 1st through November 30th, 2023, and you'll begin at a Cal State in August, September 2024. So we're going to go ahead and get started, and this is a full step-by-step -step tutorial. So what you can do is you can first go to Cal State apply, calstate.edu forward slash apply. And then when you get there, you're going to scroll and choose fall 2024 and click apply here. Okay. From there, it's going to ask you to create an account and you can enter your information here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So as you can see, student entered their information. We're using Sammy Seahawk, the Harbor College mascot for ours. Uh, you wanna make sure you agree to the terms. And then please, if you are not in the European Union data protection, please choose no here. Uh, I've never had a student that actually is in this. So I've never had a student need to press yes, but sometimes my students accidentally choose yes. So I don't want you to do that. Please go ahead and put no, as long as you are not in one of these countries. So from there, it's going to ask you to complete the extended profile section. So it wants to know what degree you're applying for. 99% of the time, my students are applying for their first bachelor's degree. Um, and then if you're earning an associate degree for transfer, you would choose transferring from a California community college and earned or planning to earn an associate degree for transfer. And then these are the majors that are the options, right? So if you're doing any of these majors, then you should choose this one, this option for you, okay? If you're not getting an associate degree for transfer, you can just do transferring from a community college or four-year institution, um, not part of the associate degree for transfer program. So if you're, for example, a nursing major, you're probably not getting an associate degree for transfer. If you are a social work major, you might not be getting an associate degree for transfer, right? So it depends on your major. If you have less than 60 units, by the end of spring semester, you're applying as a lower division transfer. If you select zero to 59 units, don't forget, you have to enter your high school transcripts into the application as well. Uh, I would say about 99% of my students are applying with 60, per, 60 or more units by the end of spring 2024. So by the end of spring semester this coming year, that's when you need to have your 60 units done. So you should be choosing 60 plus units. In the rare case that you are applying as a lower division, don't forget you do need those high school transcripts. But in this example, we'll just go ahead and indicate that you're going to Harbor College, you're getting an associate degree for transfer, um, let's say psychology, okay? It's a very common major. No, not getting a second associate degree for transfer unless you're getting two. The major that a lot of people get two for is the business administration 2.0. That's the business admin with the business calculus combined in there. Normally those students, they get business 2.0 and then they'll get a second one from Harbor College in economics and that's because the requirements are pretty much identical um, but like I said before in this case we're just going to use psychology as our example because I have a psychology sample record to use and then um, if you are trying to go back to a CSU that you attended in the past with the same major you will want to choose yes here but most of the time that's not the case so we'll put no for this example Military status, whatever applies to you. If you're an international student, you would choose yes here. That's only if you're studying with the F1 visa or J1 visa, okay? Um, and then, so for this example, I'll put no. And then California is your home state if you're not international and you're a student at Harbor College. For programs, let's go ahead and add a couple of different ones because I want to make sure that I give you some good examples. So let's say Cal State LA, that's a very popular campus, um, pretty close to um, East Los Angeles College, one of our sister schools. So we'll add psychology at Cal State LA. Okay, and now Cal State LA asks if you want an alternate major. 
So if you do want an alternate major, you can go ahead and choose yes and pick one. Now, me being a counselor, I do kind of like rehab services a lot for students who may not get into psychology. That's a really good one, but a counselor can help you determine if you have the classes you need. We'll pretend in this example that the student has the classes that they need for rehab services too. If you want help um, determining what would be a good alternate major, please see a counselor so we can help you find an alternate, alternate major that's a good option for you. We don't want you to pick something that's random that you wouldn't qualify for. Um, now this says dissimilar program chosen. That means that I'm getting the associate degree for transfer in psychology and rehab services is not considered a perfect match to psychology. Um, in this case, I'm okay with that. I'm going to choose yes. But when you see that message come up, you're going to want to make sure that you contact a counselor so we can check for you and see what's going on. Um, I'm going to pick a second one. Now I'll do save this choice. Um, and then I'll choose a second campus. Let's do Long Beach because Long Beach is one of our most popular campuses at Harbor. And then I'm going to choose psychology again. Bear with me. This takes a second. Okay, so I have a couple of schools. And then I'll just choose one more. I'll choose Dominguez. Okay, and then once again, we're going to choose good old psychology because it is so popular. Okay, and then once you're done choosing your schools, you can go ahead and choose continue down here and it'll let you move on to the next section. So as you can see, each application costs $70. Um, at this time, it shows that we have a lot of information to fill out. So we'll go ahead and do continue to my application. And as you can see, they're all due same day, November 30th. And continue to my application. So each of these boxes needs to be filled out with all of your information. Um, personal information, to be quite honest with you, is very self-explanatory. You check off the release statement boxes. Next section, enter your biographic information. Okay. Now these you wanna read carefully because um, just in case you didn't notice, it does ask very important, important information and you wanna answer carefully and correctly. So I'll go over those. And then you're going to want to go ahead and continue to the next one. Contact info. You just want to enter your information, make sure everything's correct. So as you can see, you put in your address, right? Um, it says approximate date through which current address is valid. That's in case, for example, let's say I'm going to be moving out soon or my lease is expiring soon or something like that, then I would put until which date the address is valid to. But if you plan on being there permanently, you can leave this blank if you choose this is your permanent address. Okay, the next section is a very important one. It's citizenship and residency. So you wanna make sure, depending on you, that you choose the correct response. So if you are a US citizen, you can go ahead and choose to enter that here. If you were born outside of the U.S., what year did you move to U.S.? So if you're a U.S. citizen, but you um, moved here and you were born um, in a different country, you can put the year, let's say 1995 in this example. And then what state do you regard as your permanent home? California. Do you claim California residency? Yes. Have you lived in California since birth? Let's say yes, you did. Okay. And then you can save it. Now, if you are a dreamer, you would put some different responses for students who um, are undocumented. So I'll go ahead and show you that example too. Now for my students who are filling out citizenship section um, as AB 540 or undocumented, for citizenship, you wanna make sure you choose none here. You can choose your country of citizenship here. So for US, none. For a country of citizenship that you do have citizenship to, you can put that here, the year that you um, moved to the US. And then uh, you still wanna mark that you're a California citizen, that you're a California resident, excuse me. Um, yes, claim California residency. No, have not lived in California since birth. And then 
a date of when you began your stay in California. So as you can see in this live demo, we put none here. Country of citizenship believes 2001 was the year that moved to the U.S. Do you claim California residency? Yes. Have you lived in California continuously since birth? And then you could put no there. And then the date in which you began your stay in California. Next section, race and ethnicity. You can choose whatever you would like. Um, yes or no to any of these based on your own identity. Uh, you can choose mold, uh, oh, just wanted this example, but you can choose um, multiple here. So for example, if a student is uh, mixed with different ethnicities, that's fine. You can also choose decline to state. You could also choose none of the above, whatever you would like. Um, and then if you're American Indian or Alaskan Native tribe, you can choose yes or no here. Um, and if you choose yes, it allows you to um, input more information here. And then California State University often needs to report only one summary race ethnicity description for a person. Please select your reporting preferences. So you can either choose one or put two or more races slash ethnicities if you are um, mixed with different ethnicities. Or you can also choose to claim to state whatever you wish. And then other information, you would put SSN here, yes or no. We'll put a nice fake one. Language would go here. If you're uh, if you have a first language other than English, you can input that as well. Uh, military dependent. And then are you in good standing? More than likely you are in good standing, but if you were not, you can indicate. So always be honest in this part because if you are not honest, they can find out and that would not be good to lose your um, eligibility if you're not honest and they find out you um, are withholding information. Um, CalFresh wants to know if you'd like to know more about CalFresh. Um, you can put yes if you'd like that resource. Um, California Promise, that would be um, for students who transfer to Cal State that they'll finish their bachelor's degree in two years. Once they transfer, you can choose yes if you like to learn more. If you did our nursing program at Harbor College and you're trying to apply for an RN to BSN and you're getting ready to get your RN license or you have it, you can put yes here. Um, and put your RN license number here. If you don't have it yet, you could put no, but if you're expecting to get it soon, you could put a zero if you just took the test or about to pass the test. And then how did you hear about us? Whatever you would like. A lot of my students put counselor. So I'm glad that counselors are supporting our students with um, the application and encouraging them to apply. And then parental and financial information, depending on the student, if you, if any of these apply to you, then you are considered, um, if none of these apply to you, then you are considered um, dependent of your parents and you need to put your parents' income here. The number of people supported by the income, let's say we have a family of five. Now, if your uh, parent or parents collect SSI, both of them, then you put the income at zero. Um, but if your parents do have an income, let's say the parents have an income of $40,000, um, you can put zero here, untaxed income. And untaxed income can be like child support, for example, um, but just depends on the student, right? Um, are you interested in campus housing? You can put yes if you would like to learn more. And then your parents' educational information. And save and continue. Okay, and then you're going to want to add your high school. Um, make sure that you um, input this correctly and accurately, please. So in this example, the student went to San Pedro High School. I'm going to save this school. Now, if you went to multiple high schools, you put in all the high schools, and then you choose which high school you got your diploma from. So if the student went to San Pedro, Mary Star, Ampola, but they got their diploma from Pedro, then they would choose San Pedro High School here. And then I'll just put the example, the June 23rd, 2022, 
and you just keep going through these sections. So did you attend high school outside of the United States? No. If you did, then you put yes here and indicate the information there. Now the colleges attended section is very important. You wanna make sure that you put in all the colleges you attended. So if you went to Harbor College, definitely gonna put in Harbor College there. We'll do that as the example first. So Los Angeles Harbor College, the best college. Um, and then did you obtain or are planning to obtain a degree from this college or university? Now, in this case, we had put that you were going to get an associate degree for transfer in psychology in our example. So we're going to indicate that you, yes, will get a degree, associate of arts for transfer, psychology. There's a trick too, if you like type the word psychology, it'll appear on, it'll appear on the application. Let's say we're going to get it in June 2023 excuse me, 2024. Okay. And then semester, we're on semester, in-state tuition, right? Uh, and then in our example, let's say you started in fall, um, let's say August, 2020. And we're gonna check that we're still attending this college. Now, if you went to a sister school, your transcript would indicate so, and you want to input the sister schools as well in this application. So we'll take a look at how that looks together. Now, we have a sample transcript here where the student, it looks like they always attended Harbor, but in fact, they actually also went to West LA College. And the way you can see that is because on the transcript, it shows WLAC here. So we're going to go ahead and add another college or university, and it's going to be West Los Angeles College, one of our sister schools. No, I didn't get a degree from there. I just took a couple of classes in winter 2020, in-state tuition, and we'll put winter January 2020. So you do want to have your transcripts on hand, okay? So that way you will be able to put in everything accurately. Go ahead, save. Now let's say you went to Santa Monica College or El Camino, Long Beach City College. Those are all schools outside of our district. Harbor College is in LACCD, Los Angeles Community College District. So all of your classes within our district will all appear on your one Harbor College transcript. It's a universal transcript. Um, so that's why we see those, right? The West LA and the Harbor. If you went to Santa Monica, for example, also, you're going to want to have those Santa Monica transcripts handy as well, because you have to put those classes in here. Now, let's say you got all W's at Santa Monica. You never got a grade for a single class. You still need to put the Santa Monica college transcript in here. You have to add it as a college that you attended. If you got a B in one class, um, if you got an incomplete, if you got an F, you have to add every single class you ever took at any college. And if you think you signed up for a college, for a class, but you're pretty sure you dropped it, you're going to still want to make sure you contact that campus and verify that you don't have a record with them that your class was uh, was successfully dropped um, and that you don't have any classes on a transcript. Because if you withhold, uh, the, call, the universities will be able to look up and see that you went to another college and you can get in a lot of trouble for not reporting that. So you wanna make sure you report every college you've ever attended, okay? Now I'm going to show you how to add your college coursework, okay? So we're going to go ahead and start with a simple one, Harbor College. This student took a good amount of classes with us at LA Harbor College. So we'll go ahead and look at the transcript and the application simultaneously and go from there. Now in this example, the student took the following courses. So we're going to start with fall 2019. So fall. Well, in this example, let's say, hold on one second. So we're going to try this again. Fall 2019. Now your first 30 units in Cal State Apply that you took ever on your transcript, those count as freshmen, okay? Now that the semester fall 2019 is over, we're gonna add it as completed. 
Okay, not in progress. And that was freshman year for this student, for our example. Now for this student, they did, we're gonna go in the exact order as it appears on the transcript, okay? So we're gonna start with the business one. So B U S. And as you can see, as you start typing business one, it auto populates here. That's because the class is transferable. So we're going to indicate for subject, business, three units. And that was a grade of C. So we're going to include the C here. Okay. And then the CAS grade auto populates. The next class we have is COM 121. Now, as you can see, the student took, got a D first, but then they repeated it for a higher grade in a future semester. We need to put, instead of that D, since it says course repeated excluded from GPA, we're going to put RP for the grade instead. So we'll enter that together. So COM, now see how I, it already shows COM 121. So you can click on that there. Subject is communication. Grade, we're not going to put the D because we repeated it. So we'll put RP. Now you can only put RP if you already took the class again and got the new grade. If you haven't got the new grade and you're still on your first attempt and the class is in progress that you're repeating, like let's say I was repeating COM 121 this semester and I haven't got a grade for it yet, then I would have to keep the D on here. But in this example, the student took the class again and already passed it. The next class, now you might be thinking, should you add English 101 because the student got a W? Yes, you still need to add it. You need to include your Ws. You cannot leave the Ws out. Please don't do that. Uh, they need to see everything. So we'll add a W there. And then the next class is, as you can see, a non-transferable class. It's Math 137. Do you need to add it? Yes, you do. This uh, transcript entry section needs to be a carbon copy of how your actual transcript appears, okay? Um, so it does not populate with the class because this is a non-transferable class. So we have to manu manually enter it. So we're going to do that together. So it's INT space ALG for that. Subject is math. This was a five unit class. The student got a W. Now, because it's non transferable, we're not going to check this transferable box off. So we'll save that. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and add another semester. Now we'll go ahead and add a semester like spring 2020, the semester a lot of people will never forget. Um, but that semester is over, thankfully. Um, we'll add the COM 121 repeat, right? And let's say the next time the student took it, they got a grade of A. So now we'll put the grade of A in there and save it. And so now you see they're not going to count the old grade, just the new grade. Now we do have to add the West LA classes, right? So we're going to want to go ahead and input them here by going to the West LA section. So we're going to go back to college coursework again. And now we're going to do the West LA classes that the student completed. So we'll go back into that transcript. And we're going to add another, these two classes here at a semester and it's going to be winter 2020 freshman still right because that's within the first 30 units and it's a completed semester so we'll add social one subject is sociology that was a grade sub c now we have another example here. This student got a D in Spanish one, but they got it academically renewed later. So we're not gonna include that D because there's a note saying that the grades and units are not used. So we'll go ahead and show you how that looks. So you would enter Spanish one here, subject is Spanish. That instead of a D, we're gonna put capital A, capital R for academic renewal. And we're gonna save it. And now we're done entering the West LA section of the transcript for the student. 
Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is what to do if you have classes planned for spring semester. So you're going to want to go ahead and enter your ed plan into this application too. So let's say, for example, in winter, you're supposed to take history 41, right? So we're going to do winter 2024. You're a sophomore now, and the class is in progress plan because it has not began yet. And we're going to add the history 42. Subject is history. And you don't have to put a grade because the class is has not began yet. So just make sure if you haven't made a counselor appointment yet that you do so because you are responsible for putting in your spring and winter schedule as well into the Cal State Apply because the Cal States need to know if you're planning on finishing the major prep by the end of that spring semester. So in spring, we have plans like 10, 3, Child Development 1, and AJ1. So I'll go ahead and input those. So as you can see, I put in the entire spring semester now too. And then you can go ahead and hit save. I also wanted to let you know that for child development classes, there is no corresponding child development category in the subject box. So you're gonna go ahead and choose child psychology instead. That is just fine and acceptable. So then you can choose save here. Now let's say you're an honors student and you are taking an honors class. So in this example, I'll show you how to input an honors class. So let's say in fall 2023, you're taking CAM 101 as an honors class. So you're gonna do that of course. Um, 101, subject is chemistry. Now, if you leave it just like this, it's regular chemistry, right? So what you want to do is put, leave it like this, Chem 101, but at the end of course title, where it auto populate it, you could put in parentheses, honors section. So that way it appears as honors. If you put Chem 101 H, the only problem with that is that on your transcript, it's not going to show an H here. So the way to go around it would be in the course title put in honor section because then that matches the course title, how it appears in your transcript. Um, and then I'll go ahead and save it just so you can see how it looks after the fact. So we'll go back to fall 2023. And when you open up the window all the way, it cuts off a little bit, but it will save as honor section, okay? Um, so that is how you would input an honors class. Next, I'm gonna show you how to put in AP scores. So if you have AP scores, you can put them under the standardized test category. So if you have AP, you can click here under advanced placement, add a test score. Now in this example, I do have a sample AP score to use here. So you can put the score that is passing. It does say in the Cal State Apply application guide to put in applicable scores. So scores of two and one are not gonna apply towards transfer credit. So you can put just the transferable. So in this example, we're gonna use exam title psychology because that's the one the student got a three on, right? So AP exam, we'll do psychology here. Uh, have you already taken this exam? Yes. Um, you'll put your AP ID number here. You'll find it with your AP score. Uh, let's say this exam was taken. Normally AP scores are AP tests are taken in May. So we'll say May 2020, right? So let's say May 15th, 2020. And the score was a three. So you can save the test. And that is your AP score. Now, if you have another AP score, you can choose to add it. Let's edit this. Save and add another. Let's say a student took AP English, right? So you can do AP English language and comp. 
Yes, I already took this test. Let's say it was the same day, May 15th, 2020. And the score was a five. Save that. Okay, and as you can see, um, you can just keep adding. You can hit save and add another to add more and more AP scores. Okay. And then once you're done adding your coursework, you can choose yes and save. So have you completed entering your transcripts? Yes, save your transcripts. We did the standardized test, only AP scores. You don't have to put CLEP or international baccalaureate exams unless you have them. Um, I've only had one student ever with CLEP scores and I've never had a student with IB scores. So it's pretty uncommon to have those. Um, and then general education, as you can see, um, the courses auto match based on what you input. So for this example, COM 121 counts as oral um, communication. The AP English language counted for the written communication. The math, we would choose math 227, right? So as you can see, you can also go ahead and put in that math 227 here. And the English 102 would count as your critical thinking. You could save that go to the dashboard, and then we're almost done with this. You wanna put in your ADT info here. Uh, if you're a Harvard College student, you put in your Harvard College ID number there. And then, like we said before, date that we're planning to finish that associate degree for transfer is gonna be June, let's say June 25th, 2024. And then EOP, if you would like to apply for EOP, um, this is a special program that gives you additional funding to attend college at a Cal State, along with specialized programming to support you on your journey. Um, it is income qualified that you have to meet the certain income guidelines in order to participate in the program, and not every student selected. So you really want to put in your best effort in the EOP application. So if you're already in EOPS, you should absolutely apply. Um, so for example, the student would put that they're an EOPS student at Harper College. Do you wish to apply? You can choose yes and start answering the questions. Um, or you could put, um, yes, I will return to complete these later because you can complete them later or no, if you are not interested in applying. Um, typically for my students who are not part of EOPS and they have a generally high income, they normally don't qualify for certain um, social service funding opportunities, then they normally wouldn't qualify for EOP. Um, so you can go ahead and go on from there. And then last but not least, you do have to complete the, um, the program materials and they vary based on each campus. So this will ask, for example, Dominguez wants to know if you're going to be um, interested in becoming a doctor, dentist, or veterinarian or healthcare professional. If you would like to meet with an advisor, you could choose yes or no. Um, and then if you would like to live on campus, off campus, or with your family. And then save and continue, save. For Long Beach, a lot of the Cal States are asking the same question, which is if you plan on living on campus or off campus or with family, don't forget to save for each one. And then Cal State LA likes for students to match their um, major prep with their ADT sometimes. Will you live on campus or, or with family? I'll choose on campus. Will you, can complete a, will you complete an associate art for transfer in psychology? Yes. Okay, and then just read all of these questions and certify they are correct and save and continue and save. So now we are done with our application and we're ready to submit. So you can go ahead and choose to submit them all. And then it will ask you to go over and make your payment. As you can see in this example, the student owes $0.00 they receive the fee waiver and it says that they qualify for four of four fee waivers. Every student gets four fee waivers if they qualify uh, based on the income guidelines. So if you only chose four campus, three campuses, but you got a fee waiver for four, go ahead and choose four. Um, I definitely recommend it for my students. So you can go ahead and if you wanna add another campus, you can click add program. 
and then add another um, campus. But once you are done adding all of your campuses, you can go ahead and submit your application by clicking submit all. But don't forget to visit the transfer center so we can help you submit this application. We do not want you to submit it by yourself. We want to make sure, yes, this video tutorial is meant to support you and help you with the application process. But we want you to get your application reviewed by a counselor before you submit. Because once you submit, you cannot make any changes at all. Your application is locked and we need to contact each Cal State individual um, depending on what you mistakenly input on your application to let them know that corrections need to be made and they'll never be able to unlock it so you can fix it. So with that being said, make sure you visit a transfer center counselor so we can do a final review for you and then you can submit. Thank you so much for watching this YouTube tutorial and we hope to see you in the transfer center soon. Um, you can check the links in the description for a counseling appointment with the transfer center, our hours of operation and additional helpful information. Make sure you also follow us on Instagram at LAHC transfer center and we look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.